this is the Radio Shack Pro 2052 um, with the backlight uh, LCD. Down, down. The incandescent, incandescent bulb that the uh, factory backlight burned out on this one, so I replaced it with uh, two green LEDs, um, six volt rated. Uh, the factory bulb is a five volt bulb, but um, six volt LEDs seem to work pretty well. To the ground, I ain't got to so that's uh, kind of a nice green there. And I also wanted to talk about the Pro 82, which is a GRE um, basic 200 channel scanner backlight mod. Um, this is the factory one right there. It's pretty sunny right now, so you can see that's the factory. Whoops, scan. That's the factory um, backlight there, which is green. And there's two LEDs on the uh, board there are pretty easy to replace so what I've done is made this one red you can actually see it pretty well from that angle and this one is blue um, which actually kind of is a little too much uh, especially at night when you're viewing it in the dark but um, I found that these radios, uh, particularly the Pro um, 82 and the uh, you know the, the Pro 79 and, and the Pro um, 89 and then those types of radios, are a little bit easier to do the mod on uh, compared to say uh, a Whistler manufactured one. Again, that's the factory ball, factory LEDs. Um, the Whistler radios seem to have, or seem to use a size smaller um, than the GRE manufactured version. And then further complicating things is the fact that the, um, the GRE manufactured version uh, is the, um, you know, uh, the, the Pro 404. Um, this is kind of a Franken radio. But I was able to do the mod on this one. Uh, with the red LEDs, but the other one um, I did not uh, do the modification on because it's a different size uh, LED. So they're actually like three different sizes floating around. Um, I just left that one at uh, at the factory orange, even though it is a little bit. Um, Start cell boss later because I've got some. Yeah. Yeah. 